top 10 teams in the NFL post-draft. Now, this isn't based off of where they finished last year, although it has something to do with it. We're ranking rosters. So top 10 teams, top 10 rosters heading into the 2022 uh, NFL season post-draft. Starting at 10? How are we doing this? Back and forth? Or I go, you go? What do you want to do? We could go back and forth. Okay, starting at 10? Yeah, I'll start. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, number 10. I was so, this 10 between two teams, but I went with the Eagles. Okay. The Eagles, great offensive line, defensive line, weapons. Jalen Hurts is my guy. Yeah, but I went with the Ravens at 10 just because their secondary is back. Lamar Jackson, improved it's offensive him. line, him. running game. I think they'll run the ball very well. You know, no arm, no arm Lamar, not sure how he's going to do. Can Take that back. I'm not take sure. Weapons aren't there. Are you going to take back no arm Lamar? Come on. Like, don't do it because I'm gonna the entire season. I'm gonna say you said that if, if that's the case. If you want to run with that, go for you it. You never know. So, okay, I'm not no sure. Lamar. 16, no arm Lamar. 16 touchdowns, 13 picks. Right. I don't know. Unanimous MVP, youngest ever. Cool. Well, yeah, 2018. That's three years ago, man. 2018, Get over 2019. It. 2019. That's 2019. three years ago, man. Get you love it. to talk about Matt Ryan, so please don't. We're not going to talk about 2019. He, he, you love to bring up like Matt 2016 Ryan has Matt Ryan. Success. That's what he has. He has no. He has number no nine. He's Green, been in the league for 15 years. Number nine for me is Green Bay Packers. I, you know, for me, I know people are going to be like, oh, but they don't have any receivers. Uh, come, we got to stop this. Like, their roster, top to bottom, is amazing. Their defensive line got better with Devontae Wyatt. Rashawn, they have Rashawn Gary, Kenny Clark, Preston Smith. Their linebackers getting that much better. They they brought back Devontae Campbell. They added Quay Walker. Jair Alexander is healthy. Their secondary is amazing. Their offensive line is going to be better. T- Robert Tunyon healthy. Their running back duos are amazing. Their running back duo is amazing. Yeah, they don't have that those wide receivers, but one, don't sleep on Christian Watson. Two, <laughs> it's not the end-all, be-all. Top to bottom, their team is amazing, and Aaron Rodgers will make it work regardless. Imagine if the Packers got Odin Tate, man. They might win the whole thing. Um, my number nine team is the Baltimore Ravens. You have them at 10. Trading Hollywood hurts, obviously, um, but I love the rest of the roster. They improved the offensive line with Linderbaum and Morgan Moses. Brought in uh, Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams to really solidify that secondary. Hamilton will probably play uh, some linebacker, some box safety, however you want to call it. Defensive line should be great with Michael Pierce, Clays Campbell. And, you know, the weapons are sketchy, but you have Andrews and you have Rashad Bateman. This is still going to be a run-heavy team. You get J.K. Dobbins back. You get Gus Edwards back. And I think it's going to go back to that 2019 offense where uh, Lamar did win unanimous. MVP. It's going to be run heavy. They brought in a, a tight end as, as well. I want to say, don't remember. They drafted a tight end actually, as I likely, right? Is that yeah. who it is? And Charlie um, Kohler. Okay. Yeah. So I think they're going to go back to being more run heavy than they have, uh, especially last season. They they didn't really run a ton. They were like around 20th in terms of like pass percentage in terms of plays, where in 2019 they were dead last. So I think they're going to get back to that run heavy offense, which is why I think losing Hollywood's not going to be, you know, a huge deal for them. Number eight, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, eight and seven are inter- interchangeable for me, but I'm going eight with Kansas City. Defensively, I thought they improved immensely. I do think the Tyreek Hill loss is going to be a loss nonetheless. It can be significant. But I just feel like the Chiefs last year started off really slow, even though they picked it up later in the season. They started off slow, and maybe there's a chance for that to happen this year. I don't think the team that is ahead of them is going to have that slow of a start. Because of that, I have the Chiefs at eight, but they're still a great roster of contenders for sure, without a doubt. I have the Packers at eight, and I don't feel great about it. Uh, you know, the Packers are a team that the roster is good every year. They have arguably the best quarterback every season. The last couple of years, they had the best wide receiver every season and arguably the best corner. So they've had all of the things you could possibly want on a team, and it just hasn't worked out. I mean, relative, right? They haven't won a Super Bowl. They haven't gone through a Super Bowl. They've had playoff success. They've gone to uh, NFC Championship games and been number one seed. So they've had success. It's just, I don't view this as the year they get over the hump. I don't view this as a season where they, you know, cut through, they get to a Super Bowl. They're able to get past the Rams, the 49ers, Tampa Bay, whoever it might be. I don't look at it this season, but they still have to be in my top 10 because they have LaFleur and Rodgers, one of the best head coach and quarterback, probably the best over the, uh, since LaFleur has gotten there in terms of win percentage. So the Packers are still eighth for me, but I don't feel great about it. The NFC overall is weak, so they're going to have a really good record. So I have to put them in here, but they're really not in my Super Bowl bubble. Number seven, Denver Broncos. Now, they have a really good roster. Russell Wilson now changes the outlook on that team. They got better in their defensive line. Bradley Chubb's healthy. Randy Gregory. They drafted Nick Benito. Benito. Uh, they got Jones from San Francisco, who I think was a pretty good uh, pickup. So they got some players. Their secondary 
could use some work outside of Pat Sertan. I don't know who else is there, but they're definitely, they have a direction at least. I think the Broncos have a better roster than the Chiefs, in my opinion. Um, Didn't bring up Bradbury to the Broncos. They need corner help. Oh yeah, maybe Drew. It can Drew yeah, that was maybe, maybe Drew randomly DM'd our Instagram group chat. What do you, I don't even know what he said. He said we need him or something. I yeah, like so. he didn't even send anything. He just said like Bradbury or something. I was like, what are you talking about, bro? Um, but I think the Broncos are seven for me. I, I think uh, just just the Russell Wilson frat factor makes huge. them a little bit re- makes the, it gives them energy. It brings life. Like yeah. we finally have a chance here. For sure. Because we have a quarterback. So that's why I have them at seven. Yeah, I have the Bengals at seven. Um, you know, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Higgins, Boyd mixing the offense is ridiculous. The offensive line has been upgraded this season. Lyle Collins said Karras, Alex Kappa. And one of my favorite players in the draft was Dax Hill. He's someone who could play free safety or slot corner day one. Extremely athletic. He's a solid tackler. So the Bengals, I were I was a little low on them coming into the season. Um, obviously, I mean, we're in May, so we have a, a ton to go. I don't think the Jets can have a better record than them. I know I, I said that in like February, um, but it wouldn't shock me if they're one of the teams that missed the playoffs this upcoming season. Um, just because, you know, they went to the Super Bowl. They had a lot of things go their way. I know people hate me for saying they got lucky, but every team that goes to the Super Bowl in NFL history got lucky one way or another, and the Bengals are part of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the Bengals, number seven right now, there's a few teams in the AFC I like more than them. But, I mean, Joe Burrow is on the cusp. If he's not a superstar or if he's not that elite tier one quarterback, he's damn close to it. The leadership's there. The skill is there. They have the weapons to do it. Um, it's just a matter of is there going to be any Super Bowl hangover? And, you know, what is, what is this team and what is this? Uh, AFC North look like now with a healthy Lamar, Deshaun Watson, and an upgrade at quarterback for Pittsburgh. Number six, the Indianapolis Colts. They Stand had yourself. They had the most pro bowlers in the NFL last season. That's sick. They added Stephon Gilmore. They added Matt Ryan. This team's just going to get better. For me, I don't know. If you look at their roster top to bottom, it's a top five. That's why it's, I have them here. It's a good roster. It's a top six roster in the NFL. And, you know, everybody wants to talk about the co- like defensive line. I didn't even mention Yannick Ngakwe. Defensive line got better. Grover Stewart, DeForest Buckner, yeah. Yannick Ngakwe, Quiddy Pay, a linebacker's DeForest Buckner. I mean, linebackers, Darius yes. Leonard, um, Okariki, Zare, Stephon Gilmore, Kenny Moore, Isaiah Rogers was really good last year. I mean, this team is amazing. People want to talk about the receivers. What about the weapons? Well, I mean, one, you have one of the best weapons in football, Jonathan Taylor, yes. who is arguably can be the best running back in the league this year if he wants to. If Derrick Henry doesn't stay healthy, which he didn't last year. And Michael Pittman, low end number one. I'll give it to him. Stop sleeping on Alec Pierce. <laughs> I beg you. Alec Pierce is going to be the real deal. 700 to 800 yards this year receiving without a doubt. And we're not even talking about what Paris Campbell can be. Oh, bro. I, come Paris on. Come Campbell. On. Come on. I'll give you I'm Alec Pierce. Let's not, let's not do Paris Campbell. Unfortunate situations. He's been injured. He has been. He stays healthy. What? He can ha- he can- Why is this the year when he has two two receivers over Matt Ryan is there. Matty Ice going to make sure his muscles is iced and he's going to be ready to play. And then don't uh, sleep on Naheem Hines out, out the oh, backfield. He's a solid. 70 he's one catches, of the best receiving backs 70 in the NFL. catches in 2020. He didn't have it with Carson Wentz because he doesn't check down. I'm telling you, the Colts, stop sleeping on them. Well, Jonathan stop. Taylor also didn't get going until the second half of 2020. Stop sleeping on the Colts. Work. Um, listen, I like the Colts. I think they're a, I think they're a good team. I think they can compete for the division. They might win the division. Um, I just, outside of Jonathan might. Taylor, they might. It's between them and Tennessee. Come on, man. I, I might give these slight edge, like 55% leading Colts right now, right? I, I do on, give man. them a little bit of the edge. But I just... The rest of these teams are explosive. They're dynamic. We have the Bengals. We're going to talk about, spoiler, we're going to talk about the Chargers and the Rams and all these teams, right, that are just explosive. And even the teams behind them, like the Broncos and and Ravens and Eagles, who have these explosive, dynamic playmakers. And the Colts, it's Jonathan Taylor. Michael Pittman is this borderline wide receiver one, and you have an aging, older Matt Ryan who's really not explosive anymore. So I look at the Colts, and while they have a good team, you mentioned the most pro bowlers last year. That's fine and dandy. They missed the playoffs. Now, sure, Carson Wentz was not good down the stretch. Matt Ryan is going to come in, and he's going to be better consistently than Carson Wentz. Statistically, though, he's probably going to put up similar numbers to what Wentz did. All he has to do is not be terrible down the stretch, which is what Wentz was last season. So I don't even have the Colts in my top 10. I think six is ridiculous, truthfully. Um, I, I don't know how. I'm curious to hear... 
So, sorry, you had them at six. Remind me, seven through ten again? Broncos, Chiefs, Packers, Ravens. Yeah, they're all over the Colts, and I don't think it's that close. Um, but anyone, I'll go anywhere. I'll go on to my number six team, the Denver Broncos. Number one, far away, you mentioned the Russell Wilson trade tra- changes everything about this team, about the culture. Let me ask culture. you a question real quick before you sure. go on your soliloquy. Lamar Jackson, if he's on the Colts, yeah. are they not the sixth best roster in the league? Yeah, well, Lamar Jackson is a significantly better quarterback than Matt Ryan. Not too sure about that. Yeah. What? Matt what? Ryan is him. Bro, no, he's not. Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan is, is good. Him. He's not him, bro. We can't just throw out throw but I'm around just saying, him like it's anything. Th- but th- that's what I'm saying, though. So if the Colts had Lamar, you might have ranked them top three. If you could put Lamar, like, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, of course. If you get a significant upgrade at quarterback for half the teams so in the Russell NFL. So Russell Wilson goes on the Colts. They're, they're top five, right? They're top ten. They're top. They might be. They mm. They're, they're, I mean, the, I have the Broncos at six, so the Colts will probably be around here too. You're sleeping on Matt Ryan. You I'm think Matt Ryan's them. gonna be as good as Russell Wilson or Lamar Jackson? Can he can put up better stats this year? Yep, he can. Yep, he can for sure, bro. Yep, bro. Yep, bro. Maybe not Russell, Lamar. Yes, total yards, total touchdowns. <laughs> well, I'm talking about passing. No, but no, but that's not fair. That's what a quarterback that's does. Not, that's not fair though. That's what a quarterback does. That's not fair because Lamar Jackson changes the game with his legs. Okay, I understand that, but I'm talking about passing. Passing well, yards. I don't, I don't care when Lamar Jackson's the best rushing quarterback in NFL well, history. Well, Matt Ryan doesn't need that because he has JT. I understand, but th- Lamar also doesn't have to be a spectacular passer because he's the best rushing quarterback ever. But I caught you. You see that? You you think the Colts are this great of a roster. They have a really good you, roster. You just didn't prop them up into top 10 because they're because not explosive of Matt, enough. Because of Matt Ryan. That's they're not why. explosive I, enough. I know what you and did No, now. no, no. And you, Matt Ryan. No, because you said if you give them Russell Wilson Lamar, two of the most explosive quarterbacks in the NFL, that changes things. But you have Matt Ryan who, he's good, but he's not great. He's, he's like the ninth or eighth best quarterback in the AFC. You give them Stafford, there's a top seven roster. If you give them Stafford, they'd probably be like 8 through 10. They'd probably be 10. Maybe 9. Out of here. Matt Ryan, he's not him, bro. He's like he. Watch. He's not him. He's like a, like a little bit. Like he's all right. Um, moving on from that ridiculous He has the same pronouns six. as him. He slash him. But not everyone goes. He, he might be a he slash they. I don't know. He might, I might not go by him. Matt Ryan is he him. That's who he is. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Anyhow, moving on to my sixth team, the Denver Broncos. You talked about them already, so I won't go in depth. But Russell Wilson trades changes everything. The only reason I have him six instead of these and a few teams above them is just because the receiving core of Sutton, Judy, and Tim Patrick isn't as proven as the rest of the guys. But I love their tight end room as well with Albert O and Dolchich, probably the most athletic tight end room in the NFL. Yep. And defensively, a little worried because Fangio leaves, but you have still have Sertain Simmons who's going to you know lock up that secondary. DJ Jones was a great pickup in the interior. Randy Gregory and, and Bradley Chubb, what's going to happen there? You know, Bradley Chubb had zero sacks last season after being a top five pick a couple years ago. Randy Gregory, to me, seemed to get a bit overpaid. He's had um, some issues of his own as well. So um, depending on how great this uh, this defense is, if they're top three defense again, they might be the number one seed. But I worry about that with Fangio leaving. With this top five, I feel like a lot of our team is going to be the same. So I'll go rapid fire here. Yeah. Number five, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Self, self-explanatory. Added Russell Gage. Brought back most of their guys. Number four, Cincinnati Bengals added offensive line help Lyle Collins, Alex Kappa. You also added Ted Caras to that mix. I feel like they're going to be much improved, at least offensive line-wise. Number three, the Chargers. Khalil Mack, I mean, huge. Then you go get J.C. Jackson, Sebastian Joseph Day. You just signed Kyle Van Noe. Like, this roster is ridiculous from top to bottom. Number two, the Rams have to respect them still. They added Allen Robinson, Bobby Wagner, Super Bowl champs. Number one is Buffalo, though. The Von Miller signing to me is the, that alone makes them, to me, the best roster in the NFL. We have similar teams. There's a couple in here I, I think uh, you didn't have. Five for me, I think you had them out of the top five was the Chiefs. Uh, great offensive line, you know. Chris uh, Chris Jones, Karloftis in that front seven. Nick Bolton, that linebacker. Sneed brought in uh, McDuffie, too. You have some questionable weapons. I mean, you have Juju, MBS, Brunson Sky Moore, CH, who knows, Hardman, who knows. 
Obviously, Travis Kelsey is going to be the guy there. Um, but I still have the Chiefs at five. Patrick Mahomes and, and Andy Reid didn't even mention don't have to. Um, but they're still a top five team to me. Number four is the Chargers. Upgrade the offensive line. Zion Johnson's a first round pick. Upgrade defensive line with Sebastian Joseph Day. And as you mentioned, Khalil Mack, that was a huge trade for them to get some edge help, rush the passer. Duran James able to stay healthy for a full season last year. Hopefully, he's able to do that again. And then the offensive talent with Herbert, Eckler, Keenan, Mike Williams. And one uh, player I didn't mention who I really liked was Isaiah Spiller, who they got on day three. Backup running back, someone they've been looking to fill that that role for. You know, they had Melvin Gordon and Eckler for a while. Melvin Gordon left. They had Eckler, but never really felt, uh, found that wide uh, running back two role. Number three, the Rams still one of the top dogs in the NFC. Stafford and Cup year two together. Who knows how, you know, if, if Cup's able to put together one of the historic seasons again. Traded out A-Rob or traded out Woods for Allen Robinson, brought in Bobby Wagner. You got Cam Akers healthy. Kyle Van Noy, as you mentioned. Sean McVay still one of the best head coaches of the NFL. Two, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady, once again, has another loaded team. Brought in Shaq Mason to upgrade an already fantastic offensive line. We know the weapons. Even if uh, Gronk doesn't come back, you still have Cameron Bray, who's phenomenal. Um, for Nat Rashad. Huh? Phenomenal? So, sorry, that was rude. That was rude. He's a phenomenal backup. Phenomenal backup is what I, was what I was he's going at there. Cameron Bray, he's phenomenal. <laughs> he's a phenomenal backup. Is I think that's what I was going for there. Um, brought in, re-signed for net, drafted Rashad White, who was Drew is one of his favorite running backs. Did lose uh, Whitehead to the Jets, but still solid secondary with Winfield, uh, Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean. So got some guys there. As you mentioned, though, my number one team, the Buffalo Bills. The most complete team to me in the NFL Josh Allen is probably the best quarterback in the NFL. If not number one, he's number two. Brought in Jamison Crowder. You still have Stephon Diggs, your boy Gabe Davis, who I am not as high on. Um, Solid O-line, Von Miller, uh, Kyir Elam, Trey White's back. Great safety duo. The Bills are ridiculous. Can they get over the hump? Can they beat the Chiefs this year? That's the real question. People don't talk about it enough, but they were 13 seconds away from stopping Mahomes. Your people not talk. I think we talked about it enough. Winning the Super Bowl. People talked about that for like weeks. They should have won it. They though. changed the overtime. They would have beat the Rams. You think? Yep. They would have beat the Rams. Would they beat the Bengals? Yeah. They'd beat the Bengals. Okay. I think they would have beat the Bengals. You're, you're low on. I mean, yeah, that fits your narrative of the whole Rams thing, so it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the Buffalo Bills don't sleep this year. I think this year they get it done. You think so? Yep. I, the Bills are like, I also think they can win the Super Bowl, but it also scares me because everyone thinks they're going to win the Super Bowl. Everyone thinks Josh Allen's going to win MVP. So that scares me a little bit. And I feel the same way about the Jets that everyone's like my, you know, my uh, dark horse this year is the Jets. My dark horse for MVP is Zach Wilson. Like when everyone's on the same train, I get scared and I kind of get that vibe from the Bills this year. So that you don't think Zach Wilson's going to break out because of that? I wouldn't say that, but I think everyone's on the Jets train after this ridiculous draft that um, I think people are expecting them to be phenomenal playoff locks when I think if they get eight wins, I would be ecstatic. 